Clean yourself up. And don't dirty my cock. The casting process for MacGyver, the 1985 TV series, was a thorough process with producers and directors aiming to find the perfect actors to bring the characters to life. Richard Dean Anderson, who played the lead role of Angus MacGyver, was chosen after a long and exhaustive search. Producers were looking for someone who could portray the character's intelligence, resourcefulness, and charm, and Anderson fit the bill perfectly. His audition showcased his ability to convincingly play a man of action with a strong moral compass. The role of Pete Thornton, MacGyver's boss and confidant, was given to Dana Elkar. Elkar had previously worked with Anderson on the TV show General Hospital, and the two had developed a strong rapport. This existing chemistry made Elkar a natural fit for the role of Thornton. Casting the character of Jack Dalton, MacGyver's friend and occasional partner, proved to be a challenge. The producers wanted someone who could bring both humor and intensity to the role. After seeing many actors, they finally found their man in Bruce McGill. His audition demonstrated his ability to balance the character's comedic and dramatic elements. The casting of the supporting characters was also crucial to the success of the show. Producers looked for actors who could bring depth and authenticity to their roles, no matter how small. This attention to detail helped create a believable and engaging world for MacGyver and the other characters to inhabit. In the end, the casting of MacGyver was a testament to the power of careful consideration and the importance of chemistry. By taking the time to find the right actors, the producers were able to create a show that has endured in the hearts of viewers for generations. This is a lot different than I thought it would be. What were you expecting? The directorial vision behind the 1985 TV series MacGyver was shaped by its creator, John Rich. Rich's approach to storytelling was characterized by his ability to create suspenseful and action-packed episodes, while also focusing on the personal growth of the main character, Angus MacGyver, played by Richard Dean Anderson. Rich's creative influences included a blend of adventure films and spy thrillers, which he used to inform the pacing and tension in MacGyver. He was also inspired by the problem-solving and resourcefulness of the main character, which he brought to life through the use of clever gadgets and inventive solutions to problems. In terms of style, Rich favored a fast-paced, kinetic approach to filming, using handheld cameras and quick cuts to create a sense of urgency and excitement. He also worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that the show's tone remained consistent and that the characters were well-developed and believable. Rich's collaborative approach extended to working with the show's writers, producers, and actors. He encouraged input from all members of the team and was known for his ability to foster a positive and creative working environment. This collaborative spirit was essential to the success of MacGyver as it allowed the show to evolve and grow over its seven season run. In summary, John Rich's directorial vision for MacGyver was characterized by his ability to create suspenseful and action-packed episodes, while also focusing on character development and collaboration. His creative influences, style, and collaborative approach helped to make MacGyver a beloved and enduring TV series. This. MacGyver is a classic 1985 TV series about a secret agent named Angus MacGyver, who uses his intelligence and creativity to solve problems and escape dangerous situations. He's known for his ability to make complex devices out of simple objects. Perhaps one of the most memorable aspects of the show is MacGyver's iconic duct tape and Swiss Army knife, which he uses to get out of all sorts of jams. Whether you're a longtime fan or new to the series, there are plenty of interesting facts about MacGyver that you might not know. From funny behind-the-scenes stories to shocking trivia, there's something for everyone. So, when was the first time you watched MacGyver? Do you have a favorite role or episode? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. For many of us, MacGyver holds a special place in our hearts. Whether it's the thrilling action, the clever problem solving, or the memorable characters, there's something about this show that has stood the test of time. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn some fascinating facts about MacGyver. From the show's surprising origins to the many ways it has influenced popular culture, there's plenty to discover. And who knows, you might just learn something new about your favorite character or episode along the way. Nothing. I must have lost it in a... Yeah. The production of MacGyver, the 1985 TV series, was a well-orchestrated effort involving set design, location scouting, and logistical planning. 
The show's set design was instrumental in creating the diverse environments that MacGyver found himself in, from laboratories to caves. The production team often built set pieces from scratch, allowing for a high degree of customization and control over the final look. Locations for filming were carefully selected to match the storyline's needs. MacGyver's iconic headquarters, the Phoenix Foundation, was filmed in a real building in Los Angeles, while other episodes took the crew to various outdoor locations, including forests, mountains, and urban settings. One logistical challenge of filming was capturing MacGyver's signature use of everyday objects to solve problems. This required careful planning and coordination to ensure that the necessary items were on hand and that their use was both safe and plausible. In terms of innovative techniques, MacGyver was one of the first TV shows to employ computer-generated imagery for visual effects. While still in its infancy during the show's production, CGI allowed the team to create more dynamic and visually interesting scenes than would have been possible with practical effects alone. Overall, the production of MacGyver was a complex undertaking that required careful planning, coordination, and execution. The result was a compelling and enduring TV series that continues to captivate audiences today. Same here, sister. Bill Cody. I MacGyver is a classic television series that has captivated audiences since its debut in 1985. The show follows the adventures of the title character, a resourceful and intelligent hero who uses his knowledge of science and engineering to solve problems and escape dangerous situations. MacGyver is known for his refusal to use guns, instead preferring to use his wits and ingenuity to outsmart his enemies. One of the reasons MacGyver has endured as a popular series is the charisma and likability of its lead actor, Richard Dean Anderson. Anderson's portrayal of MacGyver has made him a beloved figure among fans of the show. The series is also notable for its action-packed storylines and clever writing. MacGyver often finds himself in thrilling situations, using everyday objects to create elaborate solutions to the challenges he faces. The show's game between MacGyver and his nemesis, Murdoch, is a particular highlight, with the two characters engaging in a mental battle of wits that is both entertaining and engaging. MacGyver has also had a lasting impact on popular culture, inspiring a generation of viewers to think creatively and solve problems using the resources at hand. The show's legacy can be seen in the many real-world applications of its scientific and engineering concepts, as well as in the countless references to MacGyver in other forms of media. In 2003, the MacGyver series joined the lineup on the cable network TV Land, where it continues to be enjoyed by fans both old and new. Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to the series, MacGyver is a show that is sure to entertain and inspire. With its exciting storylines, memorable characters, and timeless themes, MacGyver is a classic television series that is not to be missed. We're not here looking for Enrique. It's the military's job to bring him in. Not if I find him first. The music in MacGyver, the 1985 TV series, plays a crucial role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone. The show's composers, Randy Edelman and Wilfred Williamson, created a score that beautifully complements the series' action, adventure, and suspense elements. Edelman, known for his work on films like The Last of the Mohicans and Gettysburg, brought a cinematic quality to MacGyver's music. He used a mix of orchestral and electronic instruments to create a unique sound that reflected the show's blend of intellect and action. Williamson, who composed for shows like The A-Team and Magnum P.I., contributed to MacGyver's distinctive musical identity. His compositions, often featuring catchy, upbeat melodies, perfectly captured the show's adventurous spirit. The soundtrack also included popular songs from the 80s, which helped to establish the series setting and atmosphere. These songs were carefully chosen to complement the narrative and emotional tone of each episode. For instance, in the episode The Human Factor, the use of the song The Heart of Rock and Roll by Huey Lewis, and the news underscores the lighthearted, humorous moments, while the score's dramatic cues heighten the tension during action sequences. In creating the music for MacGyver, Edelman, and Williamson focused on enhancing the viewer's experience. They carefully crafted each piece to reflect the narrative's mood and pace, ensuring the music and visuals work together to tell the story. In interviews, both composers have expressed their appreciation for the opportunity to work on the series. They enjoyed the creative freedom and the challenge of crafting music that could match MacGyver's fast-paced, unpredictable storylines. In the end, the music of MacGyver stands as a testament to the power of music and storytelling, 
It's a perfect example of how the right score can elevate a TV series, making it more engaging, memorable, and enjoyable. Be with you. Dalton says I will be of continuing help in his longevity project. MacGyver, the protagonist of the 80s TV series, is known for his resourcefulness and practical skills. His white Nike court force high top sneakers, frequently worn in seasons 3 and 4, are a notable aspect of his wardrobe. In one episode, the heist from season 1, MacGyver breaks his self-imposed rule of avoiding alcohol. He sips wine while attempting to use sound waves to open a vault during a break-in at Catlin's office. The show's opening sequence features the MacGyver title appearing from an explosion in red and gold lettering, mirroring the colors of Richard Dean Anderson's favorite NHL team, the Calgary Flames. You're gonna love it. When can we get together and talk? Peter, you've been burning the candle at both ends. Del One of the most iconic scenes in the 1985 TV series MacGyver is from the pilot episode, where MacGyver escapes from a runaway cable car using his resourcefulness and a simple ballpoint pen. The scene showcases the unique problem-solving skills that the character is known for. According to the show's producer, Lincoln Kilpatrick, we wanted to introduce MacGyver in a way that would set him apart from other action heroes, and this scene did just that. The scene is shot with a steady, tense camera movement that follows MacGyver's every move, highlighting the urgency of his situation. The use of practical effects, such as the cable car model, adds to the realism and authenticity of the scene. Actor Richard Dean Anderson, who played MacGyver, recalls, We wanted to make it as believable as possible, so we did a lot of research on how cable cars work, and what would happen in a situation like that. The scene has had a lasting impact on audiences, inspiring numerous homages and parodies in popular culture. It has become a symbol of the show's ingenuity and creativity, and it continues to be one of the most memorable moments in television history. As Anderson puts it, that scene really encapsulates what MacGyver is all about, using your brain to solve problems instead of resorting to violence. Another iconic scene from MacGyver is the episode The Escape, where MacGyver is trapped in a high security prison and must use his wits to escape. The scene is notable for its use of tight camera angles and close-ups, which create a claustrophobic and suspenseful atmosphere. According to the show's director, Alan Simmons, we wanted to put the audience in MacGyver's shoes and make them feel the weight of his situation. The close-ups and tight shots help to achieve that. The scene features several impressive feats of ingenuity, such as MacGyver creating a makeshift periscope using a toothbrush and a mirror. These moments showcase the character's resourcefulness and quick thinking, and they have become some of the most enduring moments in the series. Overall, the iconic scenes in MacGyver are characterized by their clever direction, impressive performances, and innovative cinematography. They have had a lasting impact on audiences, and have helped to establish the show as a classic of 1980s television. This. You can walk now, or you can run for the rest of your life, because that's what you're going to have to do to stay alive if we don't get that money back. Angus MacGyver, the main character of the 1985 TV series, has a soft spot for hockey often seen wearing a Calgary Flames hat. The scientific methods he uses, referred to as MacGyverisms, are grounded in reality, although certain steps are omitted to prevent young viewers from attempting dangerous experiments at home. Michael Disbarre, a talented songwriter, penned the lyrics to Cleo Rocks for the episode of the same name. The mouth is different on this one. Let me see that headpiece. MacGyver, the 1985 TV series, had a significant cultural and social impact, resonating with audiences through its unique protagonists and storylines. The show's main character, Angus MacGyver, was a creative problem solver who used his intelligence and everyday items to resolve complex situations, inspiring viewers to think critically and resourcefully. MacGyver's influence on pop culture was substantial. The term MacGyverism was coined to describe inventive, resourceful problem solving, and the character became an enduring symbol of ingenuity and self-reliance. The series also popularized the use of duct tape and Swiss Army knives, as MacGyver frequently utilized these tools in his escapades. Moreover, MacGyver contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The show often addressed issues like environmental conservation, technology ethics, and international cooperation. By featuring a resourceful, morally upright protagonist, MacGyver promoted positive values and encouraged viewers to be proactive in their communities. In summary, MacGyver left a lasting impact on audiences and pop culture through its engaging storytelling and relatable protagonist. 
by addressing important social and cultural themes, the series inspired viewers to think critically and embrace resourcefulness, making it a valuable contribution to 1980s television. In the TV series MacGyver, which aired from 1985, certain details stand out about the characters and actors. Jack Dalton, a recurring character, has a distinctive trait his left eye twitches when he lies. This quirk adds depth to his persona, making him more than just a two-dimensional character. The show also had a notable guest appearance by Christopher Judge, who would later co-star with Richard Dean Anderson in Stargate SG-1. In MacGyver's fifth season, episode 13, Live and Learn, Judge appeared as a high school student under the name Doug Judge. Richard Dean Anderson, known for his role as Angus MacGyver, played this character 142 times across the series 139 episodes, as well as in two TV movies. His portrayal of MacGyver is one of his most iconic roles, surpassed only by his work as Dr. Jeff Weber in General Hospital and Colonel Brigadier General Jack O'Neill in Stargate SG-1. Anderson briefly reprised the role in a 26 Super Bowl TV ad for MasterCard. <laughs> MacGyver, the 1985 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics, but was generally well received by audiences. The show's unique take on problem solving and its protagonist's unconventional methods were praised. However, some critics criticized the show for its simplistic writing and lack of realism. The show was nominated for several awards, including two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Sound Editing for a series in 1986 and 1987. It also received a nomination for a Young Artist Award for Best Family TV Series, Drama in 1987. The awards and nominations for MacGyver are a testament to the show's impact and popularity during its time. The show's success can be attributed to its engaging storytelling, relatable protagonist, and innovative problem-solving scenarios. The awards and nominations also highlight the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew who worked tirelessly to bring the show to life. The show's enduring popularity is evident in the fact that it has spawned a reboot, which premiered in 2016. The new series has received positive reviews and has been praised for its updated take on the original concept. In conclusion, while MacGyver received mixed reviews from critics, it was well received by audiences and received several award nominations. The show's success can be attributed to its unique take on problem solving, engaging storytelling, and relatable protagonist. The awards and nominations are a testament to the show's impact and the hard work of the cast and crew. The enduring popularity of the show is evident in the fact that it has spawned a reboot, which has received positive reviews and continues to entertain audiences today. Thanks I get for cutting my friends in on a golden opportunity. Imagine my chagrin. In the 1980s, the TV show MacGyver gained significant popularity in Thailand, leading Thai people to refer to Swiss knives as the MacGyver. The show's leading actor, Richard Dean Anderson, credited Henry Winkler for the idea of MacGyver living on a houseboat. MacGyver is also notable for being one of only two Paramount-produced network shows from the Blue Mountain era that continued into the Paramount Communications era, the other being Cheers. This series, therefore, holds a unique place in television history. You know, you scared the hell out of us. Yeah, you and me both. Oh, Kelly, you were terrific. Yeah. During the filming of MacGyver, the crew often had to find creative solutions to problems, just like the show's protagonist. For instance, they once needed to simulate a snowy scene, but couldn't afford snow machines or real snow. So, they crushed up cornflakes and spread them out to create the illusion of snow. Richard Dean Anderson, who played MacGyver, was known for his pranks on set. One time, he replaced a fake prop gun with a real one without anyone noticing. When the scene was about to be shot, he handed the gun to his co-star, causing quite a scare. The show's iconic theme song was created by Randy Edelman in just two days. The distinctive guitar riff was added later by studio musician Bob Slock, who was only paid $150 for his contribution. Despite the show's popularity, the set was surprisingly low-tech. The infamous Swiss Army knife prop that MacGyver always carried was actually made from a real knife, a ballpoint pen, and a few other items duct-taped together. Behind the scenes, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community. They often spent their free time together, with many cast members attending regular poker games held by Anderson. The show's stunts were often performed by the actors themselves. Dana Elkar, who played Pete Thornton, even did his own stunts despite suffering from a degenerative eye condition. 
Despite the show's light-hearted tone, it wasn't all fun and games. The cast and crew worked long hours, often 16 hours a day, six days a week. But despite the challenges, they remained a dedicated and cohesive team, contributing to the show's enduring popularity. Born ends up in North Yemen. Yeah, I heard the uh, Chinese use it in medicines. But what would they do with the whole horns in Yemen? They make da- in the 1985 TV series MacGyver, several actors who made guest appearances, such as Don S. Davis, Christopher Judge, Peter Williams, Robin Mosley, Tamson Kelsey, and Garvin Sanford, later had significant roles in Richard Dean Anderson's other successful series, Stargate SG-1. Interestingly, Dana Elkar's body double, Don S. Davis, went on to star alongside Elkar's former co-star in Stargate SG-1. At the start of MacGyver's first season, there are hints that the protagonist resides in Griffith Observatory. However, it becomes clear as the season progresses that MacGyver's actual home is above the Coney Island stand in Venice Beach. This subtle change adds depth to the character and the series' overall narrative. You love it? Hey, it's me! Should we even tell- MacGyver is an American action-adventure TV series that showcased the resourcefulness of its protagonist, Angus MacGyver, who use scientific knowledge and everyday materials to solve problems without resorting to violence or weapons. The show's influence extended beyond entertainment, inspiring viewers to be more helpful and resourceful in their own lives. The series also left a mark on pop culture, with the term MacGyver becoming a verb meaning to cleverly solve a problem with limited resources. Additionally, the show's impact is evident in the creation of two television movies and a planned spin-off series demonstrating its enduring influence on subsequent works. Overall, MacGyver's lasting legacy lies in its portrayal of a non-violent, resourceful hero, and its influence on viewers' problem-solving approaches, as well as its enduring impact on pop culture and subsequent works. You wanted to help him. The truth! Did you help them escape? <laughs> Richard Dean Anderson, known for his role in MacGyver, has a notable connection to the restaurant industry through his father's name, Stuart Anderson, who shares it with the founder of Black Angus Steakhouse. In MacGyver, his character's adversary, Murdoch, seemingly dies multiple times, a pattern also seen in Stargate SG-1 with Apophis. Bruce McGill, another MacGyver cast member, remains in close contact with Anderson to this day. As for MacGyver himself, his first name is Angus, a name not often associated with the character. What did you say? It is lovely here. Richard Dean Anderson, best known for his role in MacGyver, had a steady presence on television from 1976 to 2005, appearing in one series every year except for 1984, 1993, 1994, and 1993, 1994, and 1996. He worked with Dan Shea on MacGyver, Stargate SG-1, and Stargate Atlantis. Six Star Trek franchise actors appeared in MacGyver, including Robin Curtis, Nana Visitor, John Delancey, Persis Kambata, Trisha O'Neill, and George Techey. John Anderson, who played Richard Dean Anderson's grandfather, was not related to him. MacGyver's episode Final Approach featured a faulty flight simulator, reminiscent of the Kobayashi Maru test in Star Trek. The character McGivers in Space Seed shared a last name with MacGyver's creator, Lee David Zlodoff. The series ended between the next phase and the inner light of Star Trek, The Next Generation. In 1985, MacGyver aired its first episode, The Gauntlet, featuring Robin Curtis from Star Trek III The Search for Spock. Nana Visitor from Star Trek Deep Space Nine starred in Hellfire in 1985. John Delancey, known for playing Q, appeared in The Escape in 1986, while Persis Kambata starred in To Be a Man in 1986. Trisha O'Neill, who appeared in several episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, and Deep Space Nine, starred in Phoenix Under Siege in 1987. George Techey starred in Twice Stung in 1986, and Lost Love Part Two in 1987. Louisiana Brew, buddy. They still gotta fly us out of here. I just gotta take care of Dana Elkar and Richard Dean Anderson, the main duo in MacGyver, first met on the set of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers in 1982. When MacGyver's production started, Anderson suggested Elkar for the role of Pete Thornton, MacGyver's friend and Phoenix Foundation's operations director. Elkar featured in almost every episode until his health declined in later years. Anderson, known for his role in MacGyver, has also worked with Garwin Sanford in three different series MacGyver, Stargate SG-1, and Stargate Atlantis. His acting career has been consistent, 
appearing in a total of six different series, including General Hospital, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Emerald Point and A.S., MacGyver, Legend, and Stargate SG-1. His presence in various series demonstrates his commitment and longevity in the acting industry. I knew that mountain lion wouldn't leave its meal behind for just any old... Richard Dean Anderson, the actor who portrayed MacGyver, had a close friendship with John Delancey, known for his role as Q in Star Trek. They worked together in MacGyver, as well as in Legend and Stargate SG-1. The first two seasons of MacGyver were primarily filmed in the Los Angeles area. However, due to the high costs and time spent on location filming, the show was at risk of cancellation. To save the series, producers moved production to Vancouver for seasons 3 through 6, allowing for faster location changes and a more action-packed storyline. For the final season, production returned to Los Angeles. MacGyver's love interests, such as Nikki, Kate, and Maria, often sparked objections from female fans, leading to the actresses leaving the show. This pattern suggests that the show's primarily male audience preferred MacGyver to remain unattached. Despite the occasional romantic subplot, MacGyver remained a classic adventure series, focusing on the protagonist's problem-solving skills and resourcefulness. Oh. Richard Dean Anderson is known for his roles in both MacGyver and Stargate SG-1, appearing in episodes titled The Enemy Within and Last Stand in each series. In MacGyver, he worked alongside Dana Elkar, who played Peter Thornton. Interestingly, when Elkar started to lose his vision due to diabetic retinopathy, his character's blindness was incorporated into the show. The second season of MacGyver, featuring Elkar, was released on DVD in the United States on June 6, 2005, just one day before his passing. Elkar's blindness also became a part of his guest appearance on Law & Order. His contributions to television spanned various genres and left a lasting impact on audiences. The God. Under that Michael Lerner, who appeared in the opening credits of the MacGyver pilot, only made one appearance in the series. In Brazil, the show's opening theme was replaced with Russia's Tom Sawyer. Richard Dean Anderson, the star of MacGyver, shares his birthday with Charles Coral, who directed Anderson in various projects, including MacGyver, MacGyver Trail to Doomsday, Legend, and Stargate SG-1. I'll level with you, sir. Obviously, this stuff is pretty powerful. I mean... In the original MacGyver series, lead actor Richard Dean Anderson shares his character's birthday, January 23, 1951, with the minor difference that Anderson was born a year earlier. The character's passport, displayed in the episode Every Time She Smiles, reveals this information. The antagonist Murdoch, played by Michael Desbaras, was initially intended for a single appearance. However, due to Desbar's exceptional performance, the producers decided to make his role recurring. Murdoch is an unpredictable and deadly villain who seems to have an uncanny ability to return from the dead. Interestingly, despite MacGyver's well-known aversion to guns, there are a few exceptions. In the pilot episode, MacGyver wields an AK-47, handing it off to the pilot he's rescuing for cover fire. He also points a gun at the villains in target MacGyver, and nearly uses one during an episode called Strictly Business, but he stops himself due to amnesia. Go on! Move it! Dana Elkar was absent from the TV movies MacGyver Lost Treasure of Atlantis and MacGyver Trail to Doomsday, despite his regular role in the series. Cuba Gooding Jr. had a part in the MacGyver episode The Coltons, which was intended to launch a series about the Colton brothers, but the show was not picked up. Terry Hatcher appeared in MacGyver, and the James Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies, both featuring Vincent Schiavelli as a hitman targeting her character. MacGyver. How is Lieutenant Murphy? Dana Elkar, initially a guest star in the pilot episode of MacGyver, was later recommended by Richard Dean Anderson to join the show as a different character, Pete Thornton, from the 11th episode. Interestingly, John Anderson, who played MacGyver's grandfather, shares the same last name as Richard Dean Anderson, but they are not related. MacGyver's preferred modes of transportation were various Jeep models, including a Cherokee Chief, a Grand Wagoneer, and a Wrangler CZ7. After his grandfather Harry's passing, MacGyver inherited his 1946 Chevy truck, and later received his 1957 Chevy Nomad. These vehicles became essential components of the show's iconic imagery. Hey, 
A few directors used the pseudonym Alan Smithy for several MacGyver episodes, including the pilot. One controversial incident linked the show to a real-life tragedy when a teenager claimed they built a bomb after watching an episode, but it was later found that no such episode existed. Maya Bialik, known for her role in The Big Bang Theory, made her acting debut on MacGyver, appearing in three episodes as Lisa Woodman. What's the plan? Well, tonight was phase one. Get you out of your cell and leave them searching. Richard Dean Anderson, known for his roles in MacGyver and Stargate SG-1, was selected to play MacGyver due to his authenticity and lack of pretension during his audition. Interestingly, when Dana Elkar, who played Pete Thornton, began to lose his sight in real life due to glaucoma, the same condition was given to his character. Anderson himself hails from the upper Midwest, specifically Minnesota, just like his characters MacGyver and Jack O'Neill. Richard Dean Anderson, known for his role in MacGyver, has a notable aversion to guns, both on and off screen. In MacGyver, his character, Angus, was never given a gun, and in reality, Anderson serves on the board of directors of Handgun Control. Inc. His career includes appearances in the pilots of seven different series, with MacGyver being the most well-known. Interestingly, Angus's grandfather, Harry, referred to him as Bud throughout the series. Uh, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I got five seconds, Chiefy. In the original run of MacGyver, the protagonist's full name was revealed to be Stace MacGyver. However, due to the name's lack of use in the pilot, and the fandom's general knowledge of it, he was simply called Mac or MacGyver throughout the series. In the penultimate episode, MacGyver discovered he had a son, who shared the same middle name as MacGyver's first name. Richard Dean Anderson, the actor who played MacGyver, reprised his role in The Simpsons in 26. He played himself, an obsession of Patty and Selma, who were avid MacGyver fans. Anderson appeared as a guest star, where he played along with the sisters' demands to act like MacGyver and escape from their traps. In the final episode of MacGyver's original run, Richard Dean Anderson did a voiceover thanking the audience for seven great seasons. This voiceover was omitted during its reruns and syndication, but can be heard on Netflix's streaming of this episode and on the DVD. Yes, Mr. Zamora. Mr. Maddox, did you hear on the television about the hell? In the episode titled Harry's Will, Henry Winkler made a guest appearance as the attorney handling the will of MacGyver's only known family member, his grandfather Harry. As a result, MacGyver inherited Harry's vintage 1957 Chevy Nomad station wagon. Interestingly, the actor Richard Dean Anderson, who played MacGyver, shares the same birthday as his character, January 23rd. But Anderson was born in 1950, a year earlier than MacGyver. The series revealed that MacGyver's family was limited to his grandfather, making their relationship all the more significant. David, we have to talk. Oh, you want to talk? The silver duct tape, frequently used by the character MacGyver, is so well known that in Norway, it's commonly referred to as MacGyver tape. MacGyver, played by Richard Dean Anderson, is known for his resourcefulness and use of a Swiss army knife. His preferred model was a Spartan model from Victorinox, although a Wenger knife was featured in the opening credits, recognizable by its long keychain. Interestingly, Anderson has appeared in two different productions with Atlantis in the title the TV movie MacGyver Lost Treasure of Atlantis and the TV series Stargate Atlantis. His portrayal of MacGyver has left a lasting impact, and his appearances in these productions showcase his range as an actor. Be out on her as well. Good. Hey, this thing's looking pretty good. You building this for the kid or...? Uh... Richard Dean Anderson, known for his role as MacGyver, reprised the character in a MasterCard commercial that aired during Super Bowl XL in 2006, over a decade after the show's conclusion. The surname MacGyver has Scottish roots, originating from the Dumbarton region, and its clan motto, Numquam Obliviscar, means I will never forget. Interestingly, Dana Elkar's stunt double, Don S. Davis, went on to play General George Hammond, Richard Dean Anderson's superior officer, in the series Stargate SG-1. Well, we'll find it. We just gotta keep digging. We'll do the digging. You get some rest, huh? Yeah. The original MacGyver series, which aired in 1985, has an interesting connection to Latin American audiences. The protagonist's name was often mispronounced as MacGyver in Spanish-speaking countries, 
and this pronunciation was even used in the Spanish dubbed version of the show. However, the 2016 reboot of the series kept the original English pronunciation. Another notable fact is that the air dates for the second and third seasons of the original MacGyver series coincide exactly 31 years apart with the respective episodes of the 2016 reboot. This means that fans of the original series and the reboot were watching new episodes on the same dates, 31 years apart. Overall, these connections between the original MacGyver series and the 2016 reboot are a fascinating example of how media can transcend time and language barriers to connect with audiences in different ways. I'm glad I could help. Did the 1985 TV series MacGyver leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this iconic show. How did MacGyver impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? Whether you were captivated by the thrilling adventures or admired MacGyver's problem-solving skills, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Share your stories with us and engage with others by liking and sharing this post. By joining the conversation, you'll be helping to create a vibrant community of cinema enthusiasts. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more explorations into the world of classic television. Let's reminisce and celebrate the enduring legacy of MacGyver together. Out into town and got the police. I'll make sure that Murdoch stays put, all right? I'll call from